Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. In this episode, I want to address a question or a statement that I have seen a few times that basically says, because modern operating systems are willing to overcommit on memory, there's really no point for standard bad ALEC to exist at all anymore. I wanted to do an episode about this because I've brought this topic up with students a few times, and, well, my students have different experiences, shall we say. So that's going to be the topic of this episode. Before I continue, I do want to remind you to check out the video description and see that there are links to upcoming events, links to more information about the sponsor, links to t-shirts, and my books that I have published. So check out those things if you're interested in any of that. So I apologize for the much more simple than usual setup here, because I had to set up a few different environments to really be able to demonstrate the point here. I've created this experiment, and one of them creates filled vectors, and another creates empty vectors with lots of space reserved. So I am reserving size elements, and for the sake of this example, this is 1024 times 1024, which is 1 megabyte times 256, so 256 megabytes, but then I allocated integers here, so that's times 4 again, so it's basically one gigabyte per vector is being allocated. And for some context, this is a virtual machine that has four gigs of RAM allocated to it, and what is that? One gig of swap space. So what this does is reserve data, so basically one gigabyte per vector, without actually trying to write anything to this, and execute this, and we can see that it's, you know, running this thing, allocating one gig at a time until it reaches a bad alloc. And this number that it has reserved is really big. What is that? Um, 70 terabytes, I think, if I have that correct, uh, in that order. And this is way more memory than this computer has. Basically, it is willing to reserve memory up to the point that it runs out of address space. That is what we are seeing here, which I know that our 64-bit pointers can handle way more than even 70 terabytes. So why does it fail there? You can look this up on Stack Exchange as just a really quick search here. But the point is that these things only have 48 bits or 42 bits of address lines, and then you might encounter some operating system specific limitations. And then this note of things like Linux allows 128 terabytes of virtual address space. So it's reaching limitations of both the physical hardware, which doesn't have full 64-bit address lines routed, and limitations of the operating system. It's willing to overcommit all over the place and just give me however much RAM I ask for until I attempt to use that RAM. And this is where things get a little bit wonky. In this version, each time I create the vector, I am not just reserving the size that I want, I am actually filling that one gigabytes of data with data. I am actually pre-filling the thing with the current iteration number is what I'm doing here. When I execute this, you're going to see something rather strange happen. So 
So notice that once it reached the limits of how much RAM was actually available to this process, it actually killed the entire terminal. It killed Bash. It didn't even just kill my program. It just died. This is a situation that is unrecoverable. In that aspect, this is true. On a 64-bit operating system like Linux, and I think on Windows, on modern processors, there's a very good chance that when you actually try to overuse this memory, that you will simply just crash and there's nothing you can do about it. The operating system won't let you continue. If you run out of address space, on the other hand, you can get a bad alloc. Now I'm going to bring you to this 32-bit Debian install that I set up quickly. This is just a modern version of Debian, 32-bit Linux, and I apologize for the fact that I am running as root. It was just the simplest thing that I did at the moment. I didn't even get X running on this particular virtual machine. I just have my tiny little test environment again. Now, what I have here is a little test program that knows how to allocate chunks in megabytes. I have this blocks data structure here that keeps track of all of the blocks that I have allocated. And I'm pre-reserving 16 blocks because I don't want the resizing of the vector that is tracking my memory use to in some way get in the way of actually trying to do this example. I start out by saying I'm going to make a block of 1024 megabytes. So I'm allocating one gigabyte. And then I'm going to dump what that looks like. We're going to draw uh, a little memory map of sorts. And then I'm going to free that block. And I'm going to dump this memory map again and show us that I don't currently have anything allocated. And then I'm going to reset my actual block tracker thingy here because I want to know the indices of the next things. So then I'm going to allocate five 512 megabyte blocks of memory. Now remember, I am on 32-bit Linux here. So this is going to be about 2.5 gigabytes. And at that point, I am reaching the limits of what is addressable in a 32-bit process on 32-bit Linux. Then I will dump that map again. Then I'm going to free up blocks one and three. So I now have two more chunks of RAM that are 512 gigabytes available. The next thing that I'm going to do is dump this memory map again. Then I'm going to allocate two more 512 megabyte blocks, and we'll see that those actually go and fill in the last freed spots when we look at the memory addresses that are being used. We will look at this memory map again, and then I am going to free up those two blocks that I just created. And that gets us to this state where I've got a 512 meg block, then a 512 meg space, then a 512 meg block, then a 512 meg space, then a 512 meg block. And then finally, what we will do is allocate 768 megabyte chunk of memory. And we'll see what happens at that point. And so we can see exactly what I said. In the first bit, it does that one one gigabyte allocation. And we see the one gigabyte allocation that starts at, we can just look at the last like bit here of F010. And then I free it and I have zero bytes used. And then I create those five blocks and I can see that I've used two and a half gigs. And then I free the two middle blocks, and we're back to 1.6 gigs used. I allocate two more 512 megabyte blocks. We can see that those have filled in those spaces, and I'll try to put some arrows here overlaid to show where the memory got filled back in. Then I free those two middle blocks again, and I see that the last thing is the same as the second memory map that has been printed. Then I try to allocate 768 megabytes 
and now I get that bad alloc. So it is possible So what we find is that it is very possible to get a meaningful bad alloc when we run out of address space. This is a very real problem for 32-bit addresses or smaller in the case that you might be doing embedded development on an 8 or 16-bit platform like AVR. And once you take into account memory fragmentation, you now reach a point where you might not have a contiguous enough address space available to allocate the thing that you want. And this might even hypothetically be a problem on a 64-bit process that has been running for a very long time and you have very fragmented allocations all over the place. Then you need to do one more large allocation and there just simply isn't a place to put it much less likely with 64-bit process than with 32-bit processes. And then you have the other thing that my students have pointed out to me, If you're using some sort of exotic resource like GPU or something that is giving you address space outside of main memory or perhaps shared memory or something else like that, it's possible that you actually get a bad alloc thrown that you have to deal with in some way. Or in the case of some of my students who have done GPU work, they actually just get a null pointer back and they have to deal with the fact that they tried to ask the GPU for more memory than they currently had available and then they have to free up other data structures or do some sort of memory management with caching. And this is all stuff that's been true for a good while. So saying that dealing with an out of memory problem is something that's impossible and C++ shouldn't even try to address this issue is a viewpoint that comes from the perspective of specifically only working with main memory on a 64-bit operating system. If you're in any other situation, there's a very good chance that you actually have to deal with this kind of scenario in some way in your system. Well, I hope this was a meaningful episode, perhaps a little bit more esoteric or something than usual. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I'll catch you later.